Hey, everybody. Welcome to Event Speak with me, Big John, CEO of Beyond Experiential. You can find us on the web, Event Speak, that is, at www.eventspeak.com. If you've been tuning in, then you know that we are a web stream. We talk to industry pros, folks out there that are in the event business in any capacity. And we've got some dialogue going here as we're all in some uncertain times and uncertain waters and basically trying to create a mutual dialogue across the board, giving people a voice and a place to call home on the web. So your virtual home on the web, guys, event speak, your new social platform for all of those in the event industry. Today, we welcome Mr. Larry Hess, CEO of Encore Nationwide. I'm guessing if any of you out there work in this industry in any capacity, you probably worked for Larry and Encore at some point. I know I have back in the day a bunch of times, and we're very fortunate to have him with the on the show with us today with over 20 years experience in the experiential worlds. Larry, welcome to the show. Thanks, Big John. It's really good to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Awesome, man. So first question, how are you? How's the family? How are you guys waiting through these times? Uh, we're doing great, you know, as well as we can be. A little bit bored. Uh, a lot of my home chores are done, right? My garage is fantastic. My <laughs> walls are painted. All the paintings are hung. My lawn is immaculate. I'm running out of chores to do. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I think it's a thing for most of us where, um, you know, everything in my house is completely organized, uh, you know, been moved around. If it needs paint, it's gotten paint. Uh, you know, nobody has an excuse coming out of this not to have everything at home done. You know what I mean? That's, that's correct. So, Larry, you know, talking about the – you know, what's going on in our, our industry right now. And, um, you know, you being someone that's been in the industry, as I mentioned, quite a long time, you know, obviously these are unprecedented times. And, and I don't know that, have you ever seen anything like this be as disruptive to the event industry as this current pandemic is? Uh, no, not this disruptive, no. But there have been two instances in my time that we've we've dealt with a little bit of a disruption, right? The in the 9/11 attacks, um, and then the recession in 2008, 2009. Now, neither one of those shut down our industry completely for this long, uh, but it was a disruption. Uh, so I feel like we have lived through a little bit of of this, um, and I'm honestly hoping that you know the recovery mimics what. The recovery was for those two uh, elements when we went through them. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's something where uh, I think that what everybody is is trying to figure out is a, you know, when do we come out on the other side of this, and what's that going to look like? Um, what do you think? as far as, um, you know, new staff that's coming into the industry that, that loves the business that probably has no clue um, what's, what's going on, uh, let alone some of us as vets that don't know what's going on. Um, you know, is it something you feel that, would your advice to them be, hold on to your hats, everything's about to change, or once we get on the other side of all this, is it going to resemble what the event industry looked like prior to the pandemic? A lot of questions there. So I, I would tell new and, uh, you know, seasoned folks out there that have been in the industry a long time to take this time to really kind of professionalize their life, right? Go on LinkedIn, make sure they have a nice profile, uh, join Event Speak, get a profile, go to the AAEP and get a profile, really professionalize their life, really take the time to make make it their job to stand out because to get to your next question is I think this is going to break and it's going to break big. Uh, so what we learned in the, in the 9-11 attacks and the recession in 2008, 2009 is that when, when we finally started to spin out of this, those things, brands wanted to get back out and they wanted to get back out big and fast. Um, and it wasn't big events, right? It wasn't NFL games, major league baseball games, concerts. It was small, uh, targeted, 
uh, street team activations, right? Get into the street, get it to where people are going to work, intercept them. You know, you know, it was gestures of goodwill. It was free samples. It was thanking them for getting through this, uh, this dilemma with us. And we're here now for you and, you know, and, and whatever that they can do. So I really feel like that's going to be the same here. Uh, especially now, because especially with this, because it's a pandemic and everybody is afraid to be in, in large groups of people. I think the concerts and the sporting events and the large gatherings are going to take a little bit of time to get back. Uh, and I think, you know, once the restrictions are eased up, uh, I think you'll see a, a blossom of like street team activation, uh, retail payment, in-store demo. I, I think you're going to see a lot of that type of stuff come back quickly. You know, I, I think it's going to come in waves. You know, um, you're going to have smaller activations, uh, trying to reach smaller groups of people. Um, I think it's going to take folks a bit of time. Some people, there are people right now that are already like got a foot out the door and they're, you know, complaining that we're still under, you know, uh, shelter in place, um, which I still think it's too early yet, just based off of uh, data and where everything sits with uh, treatment and testing and all that. But I think it's going to come in droves. But at some point, you're absolutely right that when we do officially – uh, have this under control, and we've seen um, we've seen folks have some time to get back to work. Uh, I think concerts, festivals, everything is going to come back in a major wave. But on that note, how do we see it being different? Um, we are now utilizing more aspects of t technology, virtual reality, things like that to still try to offer an experiential experience uh, for brand marketing. What do you think that looks like on the technology side of it? Do, are we going to see a lot more agencies and brands trying to incorporate that more than ever before into their activations? You know, it's hard for me to tell that, that question on, on technology, right? Because we're still very much, you know, very tactile. We're face-to-face. -face, we're, we're providing human beings to deliver that experience, right? Which I think is what the consumers are going to be craving. They're going to be craving human-to-human -human, uh, experience and, connect, and connectivity. Um, and, and listen, you know, technology has always, always been, you know, something that gets bigger and bigger, uh, and ingrained more and more in an events. Um, so I think you're right. I think, you know, I think that'll blossom a little bit more as well. Uh, I think really what's going to change is going to be the health aspect. I think that's going to be the number one change that we see here, right? You do a big uh, street team promotion where you're handing out samples. Uh, people aren't going to be probably wanting to go hand to hand anymore. It's probably going to be taking samples out of a box or, you know, a bag or something like that. I think there's going to be a lot of hand sanitizer. I think there's going to be a lot of wipes. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of glove-to-glove -glove use type of stuff. Uh, so I, I really feel like, you know, the biggest change that we're going to see is is really adhering to whatever the CDC or the WHO put together and puts together as, as guidelines for us moving forward. I think that's going to be the biggest change. 1,000%. Um, you know, I, I, I follow you on LinkedIn, and I, I always enjoy your, your posts. And uh, you, had, you had made uh, a comment, uh, jokingly, obviously, that you had slept through the class on how to manage a pandemic. Uh, and have actually reached out and said to the community, like, hey, how can we utilize our database um, to, to help in aiding this? Did people reach out? Have you heard from folks? Are you getting some opinions on folks uh, of how to handle these things? Uh, no, not we didn't get as much as we had hoped. Uh, we did get contacted by a few agencies that wanted to do a few uh, like feel good programs where they were delivering coffee or delivering yogurt to first responders and hospitals and that sort of thing. Um, and some of them did it and, and didn't use us uh, or did it themselves, but uh, we haven't really gotten involved with anything like that just yet. But we did pitch a few programs uh, to try to help on that type of front. But um, yeah, nobody really kind of took me up on that. And it's disappointing because, right, we have a database of God. I mean, you know, our, our entire d database is probably 2 million, but that's a that's a very inflated number for from the last 22 years. Active people, though, in the last six months is probably 40, 50,000 people. And it seems like I could I could easily activate them somehow to help in this in this uh, in this situation for some way. 
I think that what you said uh, a, a minute ago is still like, I think people are still kind of, they're like when you hit a bell really hard and it reverberates for a while, I feel like that's still happening and people are trying to pivot and figure out what's going on. Um, and, you know, I've been saying this on, on multiple episodes of the show now that, you know, the event industry has been thriving for years. Um, and I know for one, me personally, I worked all through the recession of 2008 and kept busy. And yeah, sometimes we take a few steps back, you might make a little less money, but for the most part, the industry's thrived. And I feel like while we have been kind of the wind knocked out of us, it's, it's a great opportunity for us all to try to give something back. And I definitely um, agree on that level, you know, with me and with Beyond Experiential and, and our network of, of vendors and friends and, and clients. And even in some cases, you know, friendly competitor agencies, you know, we're having this dialogue of like, what can we do? How can we work together to try to create value and, and you know, help the people on the front lines, the people, the medical professionals, um, the people working in the grocery stores, the people working um, to basically help us all maintain some quality of life right now and the essentials. Um, you know, and we, we, we could talk about this uh, off the air because uh, a, a mutual friend, um, Sam at On The Go and, and Ari, good friends of ours, um, they've got a huge network. Uh, they're working with a partner that's got a bunch of food trucks and they just reached out to us and we're saying like, hey, we wanna figure out how we can maybe put these food trucks into place and what mm -hmm. we can do to try to help out folks that are on the front lines. And, you know, I've been bouncing it off a lot of the folks out there. And uh, it sounds like it could be a good conversation to have like with a guy like yourself. Sure. Yeah, so, we'd, love, we'd love to be able to help in any way that we can. You know, you brought up an interesting point. You said you're talking to a lot of competitors. Uh, if, if there's one thing that's come out of this is that all of the competitors in the experiential staffing uh, space have really come together. Uh, we talk now every two weeks and it's uh, we formed a little bit of a support group. So we talk every two weeks, we talk about things that we're doing, how we're changing, how we're evolving. Um, and that was something that definitely was not happening prior to this. And, and it, it really kind of fostered a, a real community spirit amongst all of us. It's good. I, I really enjoy it. That's awesome. You know, and, and that's, that's something I think is important. Uh, I've been saying this for many years, like there is an ocean of opportunity out there and you know, and if we can have a sense of solidarity and community amongst us, even post pandemic at this point, I feel like there's plenty of work to go around for everybody. And while it's good to remain competitive and certain agencies have, uh, you know, advantages than others do and, you know, whatever it is, depending upon what you're looking to um, staff, you know, um, and I'm not just saying it because I'm talking to you. Like, I think Encore's always really had a top quality level of uh, people available and, and a wide variety of them for that matter. I mean, you guys have been around a long time. Your database is huge, but there's a lot of, a lot of agencies out there that do a lot of good work. And um, it's good to see a sense of uh, urgency to unite. You know, and on that, um, on that note, I know you're active in the community. And now that we're, you know, part of Event Speak, which I'm not even just saying it uh, because I'm on, you know, this network, uh, but it's something that I, I found multiple jobs on Event Speak back in the day. And, you know, before uh, the advent of social media and all that, um, what James had created with Event Speak was something everybody was using, especially talking to a lot of folks that come from my class, you know, the people that were doing experiential uh, tours and things like that in the mid 2000s around that area. Um, and I knew you were uh, an, an adapter of Event Speak in the 2000s. And, you know, obviously a lot has changed in the industry. You know, any thoughts on how the Event Speak community can support each other more and now in the future? That's a good question. I, and you're right. I loved event speak. I thought, you know, I reached out to James early on as soon as I found his site and, you know, offered to help in any way that I can. Uh, I thought it was a great idea then. And I think it's a great idea now. Um, he's got more competition now in terms of like Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups and that sort of thing, which didn't really exist uh, back when he launched event speak back then. But I think something like this is, 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 you know, 100% geared towards the experiential division or, or marketing industry. I, I think that'll, that'll help. Um, and he's got the credence, right? James has got the credence of being in the industry a long time um, and running event speak. So I think, you know, event speak will come back around and, and be a useful tool. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that event speak can do, uh, to really kind of help the industry, right? They can do all sorts of things. They can, 
you know, they can offer classes and, and educate brand ambassadors on how to be their best selves, uh, how to build a better profile, how to, you know, be more professional. Uh, you know, they can offer maybe even classes or direct links to different things like, you know, being a safe serve certification or, or taps or, you know, something like that. I think there's all sorts of different things that they can do uh, to really kind of bring this community together. Um, he can also, I mean, if he really wanted to go this way, he could, he could start a review site, right? And, and have, have agencies be reviewed to some degree if he really wanted to. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, there's hundreds of different ways that, that James can go with event speak to, to kind of help this industry for sure. 100% agree. And, you know, that was part of the reason that, uh, I was excited to, to do this, uh, you know, this, this uh, web stream, this show, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. You know, I've been in the business a long time. I've got a lot of friends. I've got a big network. And I feel like what Eventspeak can do to, to kind of create a competitive advantage um, is if we could, we're, we're recording so much content right now. And we want it to be more than just, you know, another uh, professional uh, community like you know LinkedIn and the Facebook groups are fantastic and they serve a very specific purpose uh, but this is something where we're going to try to have it so that not only the folks that of course are the brand ambassadors and the field managers and the um, the tour managers and folks like that have a place to come and have a common uh, dialogue but also for all of the folks that are agency people and account managers and and producers and vendors and people that are are equally involved in the industry in a very different capacity um, and give them um, a form, you know, yeah. to really almost look at it as like, um, I, I'd like to see us get to the point, Larry, where at one point, if you are in the event industry, you likely have event speak open on your desktop or the app running on your smartphone, because it's, it's, it's something that's easy to use. And it's something that, you know, is with the purpose of giving everybody in the event industry a voice. And I feel like sometimes with some of the other aforementioned sites, like there's, there's so much traffic, and I'm hoping that we we get to that point, obviously. But this is something where you're going to be able, even if even if, as opposed to just looking for a job, you're going to be able to tap into our extensive library of content and find out all sorts of things. And you're absolutely right. We've talked about that. Maybe offering you know free classes and things where you can get professionals giving you tips on a, a wide array of things uh, and have some fun with it along the way. But um, Larry, listen, I really appreciate you, you coming on the show today and I've enjoyed talking with you. Everybody, you can find Larry and Encore uh, on the World Wide Web at www.encorenationwide.com. I'm, of course, still Big John from Beyond Experiential. This is Event Speak on Event Speak at www.eventspeak.com. Larry, thanks again. I look forward to eventually getting out there in the field and seeing you face to face. But until yeah. then, please take care of yourselves and each other, everyone. And we'll see you on the next episode of Event Speak.